Right, this is just a quick video to explain to myself, really, how a the clutch works and the, the Suzuki uh, torque limiting clutch system works on this TL1000R engine, which I've just stripped to pieces because it had a third gear problem, but while I'm at it, I'm just trying to work out how this clutch works. So, basically, you've got got the clutch basket which has all the friction plates in it um, then you've got this top ring here now the clutch basket is turned by the engine anti-clockwise so the whole thing will spin yay um, if I take the top off I have to undo these bolts this is the pressure plate this is basically what is what pushes all the clutch plates down and against each other and provides you with a biting clutch the whole thing is pushed down and that's that happens via a push rod which is in that bag and this little sort of plunger bit and they all fit on top of there and go through there the cable is on the far side of the bike and it just pulls the whole thing down when you when you re-engage the clutch it pulls everything down and squashes all these plates up which is what provides you with the friction on your plates so just to open it all up the friction is provided by these little springs in here, clutch springs. And they just sit down on those pegs in there and get held down by a bolt which isn't torqued down too hard to be honest. Yep, I'll take those out. Doing all this left handed. How do people do YouTube videos normally then? Do they do them left-handed camera and then right-hand? Difficult. This is definitely a right-handed camera. Anyway. So, take that off. See the back of it. And you can see the, the system in here, which is what I'm interested in, which is this lot. And basically, you've got you've got three types. You've got a, you've got a slipper clutch, you've got a back torque limiting clutch, and you've got a... This one appears to be a, a forward torque increasing clutch which is a weird system it seems to be only fitted to Suzuki TLs and Hayabusa's I believe um, this is all to do with the forms of a slipper clutch obviously you've got a plain clutch which doesn't have any of this gubbins in the middle of it but the three types of slipper clutch I've just listed um, and this is Suzuki's answer to it and it's not actually that good to be honest with you lots of people don't like it but effectively put these bits out one hand somehow You've got two sections here. Okay. That pops in there, obviously. And effectively, what happens is, let's get it right on my head first. You've got, when, unless you're hard accelerating, then you are, you will be applying, even with the clutch lever fully out, you will be applying less pressure to these clutch plates than when you're actually hard accelerating and that's due to a system in here which drives which is a cam drive if you have a look at the side of this you can see one side of that is slanted and the other side is fairly flat I know it's got a slight curved edge on the right hand side just when I'm pointing with the thumb but that's just to help it locate but that is pretty much just a vertical side that bit there we go this side is, is slanted and that is the cam that is what will ride up and cause the torque to increase and cause the friction to increase as you hard accelerate and that works on these are the slots and you can quite clearly see there one side is slanted and the other side is fairly flat okay so that sits that sits in there like so and when you're riding along normally not hard accelerating it's going to fit fairly flat like this okay so it's going to sit in the in the center or revolving around to the other to the flat side which is about there nothing really happens here so when you hard accelerate it's difficult to do this one-handed how to do this how to do this pop this down somewhere can I see yeah there we go So if I revolve this centre section, you 
you can see that it wants to just lift up. And what I'm doing is revolving here. I'm not pulling or I'm not lifting or, or anything else. It's I'm simply just revolving it. And it's, what actually happens is this center section doesn't actually rise up. It's this section, the outside section, which goes down. Okay, so as that's as that's being revolved, it pulls this outside section down. And what that will effectively do is because remember you've got springs that sit up here and get bolted down onto these holes here. What's happening is as this section is pulled down, it will put more pressure on the springs because the, the spring seat isn't here. The spring seat is on the basket which sits on top of the or the sorry the friction plate which is that bit. Okay, I'll just pop that on there so you can see. So the springs will sit against a plate right at the bottom of there. Okay, so as that is pulled down away from that, it will effectively be squashing the springs which are held down onto the top here. And as they do that, they will be providing a lot more downward pressure onto this friction plate, which is squashing the plates up more, which provides you with more grip on the clutch. Now, that will only ever happen when you're hard accelerating and you're effectively engaging those cams and pulling all that down. It's difficult to try and do this, but you can see it's kind of happening here. I'm just what I'm doing is I'm holding the bottom, which is effectively attached to the input shaft of the gearbox. This top section is held on by the is is rotated by the by the engine. So what you'll be doing effectively is on the hard acceleration, twisting this and it's working against the friction which is effectively caused by the back tyre um, going through the gearbox and you'll be pulling this section down under hard acceleration which will pull the bottom down and provide more friction to the clutch springs more pressure and that's kind of how it works under all other normal circumstances that isn't happening and you've got those springs are under less pressure and you've got effectively less clutch I don't know how much maybe well, I'm guessing 75% I can't imagine any less than that otherwise you'll be slipping all day but so that's under hard acceleration it's just a way that Suzuki have, have thought up to to provide a bit more or, or less slipping on the clutch under hard acceleration now what that does mean is when you've uh, when you are not accelerating so during a, a, a gear change for instance um, there's less pressure on this plate here now remember what you're trying to do when you pull the clutch lever in is lift this plate up um, away on these springs you're lifting that up to, to loosen or lessen the pressure on the, um, on the friction plates in the clutch um, because these springs at this point when you're not accelerating they are under less pressure here you've got a lighter lever much lighter lever than if they were already preloaded slightly under uh, with, with if you had a different type of clutch I believe back torque limiting clutches they are set up so that you have maximum pressure to your clutch on everything except for when the on the hard deceleration or, or downshifting and that is when effectively you have you end up with less pressure um, arguably no not arguably it is that is a better way of doing things um, there's problems with this system it's not a bad system it's quite it's quite clever but it just doesn't work very well because I'm not entirely sure why and I still have to investigate but these ramps for some reason people say that the profiles aren't quite right and you can see this engine's at about 11,000 miles and it's slight wear that's that's the working edge slight wear to the bottom now I don't know what this bike rode like at this point I've never actually ridden it I bought it with a knackered engine and I've just taken the engine out and I'm putting it back together again to fix a, a third the third gear on the what was it now the output shaft one of the um, one of the teeth on that cog stripped off uh, I've managed to save the engine I think hasn't done too much damage but that's why I'm doing all this anyway but it even with the wear and I think that's probably normal wear it seems to slide fairly nicely it's no it's not notchy at all so I'm guessing that's going to be okay but what a lot of people do 
to get away with all to move all of this because it's basically it's infinitely variable because depending on how much acceleration you're putting onto the bike it depends on how far that ramp moves and a lot of people don't like that they just want a more direct feel on their clutch so what they do is they will weld the center to the outside and put it at its lowest point which is flat which if you use the normal springs without any washers or anything it would provide less bite than under hard acceleration but they'll weld it up flat so that no longer moves and the ramps don't work and all the rest of that but what they'll then do is they'll put shorter clutch springs in here or they'll use the, the same not shorter clutch springs but clutch springs with more um, with more pressure applied to them so the stronger springs or they'll put the original springs back in with fat washers as well so it basically preloads the springs as much as it would do if this cam was right at the top of its working range, whatever that would be, someone's worked it out. I think they somebody said five millimeter spaces on these bits. I, I don't know really to be honest, but that's what some people are doing. Um, it might well be that I have to do this again, but it's a fairly easy job to get the clutch off. You certainly haven't got to get the engine out of the bike, so I can do that another day. Um, but that is that's effectively how that system works. It will normally sit like this. The centre section won't move up and down, it's the outside section, which is what you're looking for. And it will normally sit, the inside section can't move anywhere, it's bolted down. That big space there is for this good camera working. Good washer, that's a big old washer and nut on the end of the uh, input shaft. So that centre section won't move. It's the outside section. It shifts. So as that will move up and down. Now when it's when it's not operational, so it's not providing 100% of its um, of its uh, force application to the to the clutch friction plates, it's quite high up. So I'm actually picking that up. If I drop it, it drops down again. So that's that's basically moving up and down with those those slots that I showed you before. Um, underneath this, so it's going to be at its highest section. Now it's when this is when this outer ring is twisted through the clutch plates. Remember, this is turning anti-clockwise, which turns this anti-clockwise, which turns that anti-clockwise, and those bolts go through here. And locate on that so that will want to turn anti-clockwise when that does so it will want to ride up the ramps which I can't quite make it do for some reason but you know, it's difficult to do it without it all being attached to be honest with you but that will basically turn anti-clockwise relative to this part here and will make it screw down it'll it'll screw down into the clutch and thereby grab this bit or just pull down away from this which will increase the the pressure on these springs little bits fit in there so the gap between these and that will increase which will put a lot more which will be basically stretching these springs out which will put a lot more pressure, which will want to basically pull that back down onto the clutch. Harder, much harder. Okay, so that's how that works. It's this bit moving, not that bit. Just to check whether that's right. It is anti-clockwise, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. So that should be, it should be a ramp. Yeah, the ramp's on that side. So as that is, Twist it around, it'll want to go down. See, 